Hello. These are my green pets. I'm William Green. Welcome. I made a huge mistake. My cat lab Maxima was opening up right about the same time that I found some brown rot on one of my plants. So I removed the rot and sprayed the whole tent down, everything in it, with a solution of two teaspoons of Fizan 20 in a gallon of water. And look what happened to the flowers. Oh, not good. Not good. Not good. So, I learned a lesson, do not spray flowers with Fizan 20. Which is weird because the Rexes for the most part weren't affected, so I'm wondering if it's just flowers that are still opening, still actively growing. That could have been it. Because the directions actually tell you that the Fizan 20 will prevent um, bot botrytis fungus from growing on flowers, so I, would, I thought maybe you could spray flowers with it, but I have learned the hard way, which admittedly is a pretty good way to learn. So, Kelly and Maxima, sorry. Sorry about that, buddy. Gonna have to wait till next year. The Rexes are pretty much done. This is Urku. Orku is just about, well, they, they're they starting to fade. Um, there's one more. This little one, Kuichi. The flowers are teeny tiny, and they are kind of all opening up on top of each other. But that's okay. Kali Walkeriana. I moved it over here. This area of the tent is where the fan air kind of blows down directly. So things that I want to dry out, things that have been uh, too wet or that may have had rot or something and really need to dry out quickly, they get put over here. So Walkeriana, I noticed in the plastic pot, the roots at the bottom were staying wet for longer than a day or two and that uh, that's not really good for them. So put it down here so it gets air and uh, hopefully these new leaves will grow out. It'll get plenty of light here, just kind of right under the light. And I'm gonna be looking at you in the next few months to start putting out one of those blooming growths. Wanna see that. You've had a year and a half to adjust to these new conditions in this new pot. You look like you're growing happily. You've got roots established. No reason why you shan't, shouldn't bloom. I'm really happy with the pro progress that these seedlings have made this summer. Really nice new big leaves on them. Um, I would imagine that these are still at least three years from blooming, but progress seems to be coming along really nicely. Look at how purple this... Uh, Rubra labiata leaf has come out. Super purple. It's great. And these seedlings, most of them are just potted without any, they're just in the pot without any medium. But I do have this one in just a little bit of sphagnum at the bottom. This one's got a little sphagnum. These are in a fine bark mix. These are the Rositas. Brand new leaf coming out, new root growth, makes me happy. Uh, let's see, these little rexes, these are in sphagnum, probably too much sphagnum, honestly. But we have a new growth coming out here. It's good news. This one, pretty big. I think it's more than one plant. But this one, doing really well. Really happy with the seedlings. I feel comfortable with seedlings these days. I feel like 
I know what they can do and I know what they can't do and I feel like dry is definitely better than wet especially when you when you talk about water getting in between the tiny new little growths and sitting there for any amount of time it will rot them out they got to they got to have lots of air around them drying that water out keeping the roots moist is one thing but water on the leaves and especially in the little crevices where it doesn't dry out not good these remember how terrible these looked when they came out of the flask they have recovered beautifully. Look at all those little growths. Look at you, Calyrex Splash. Splash by Great Shape. They don't really give them clonal names, they just kind of uh, give uh, descriptions. Splash in Petals and Sepals by Great Shape and Splashed. So hopefully these are going to be Great Shape and Splashed too. Great Shape be interested to see what that actually comes out to mean. The ones on the antlers really, really impressed with the root production, the new leaf production. Stuck on a deer antler. Look at this one down here. This one I didn't even know if it was going to make it or not. Doing just fine. Brand new growth. New roots, new green roots down there. This guy's really, he's rooted some, but he hasn't put a new growth out, but I have a feeling that'll change soon. This is kind of coming up on the, it's the beginning of the end of the growing season for the Catleus, but this is when some of them start to get a little bit ambitious. Um, I noticed today that Kelia that bloomed not too long ago, looks to be pushing two new growths. One down here, that old bud just broke with a little pointy new growth pushing out. And then down here, this new growth seems to be pushing and swelling as well. So if it feels comfortable putting out two new growths, who am I to stop it? But that it gets a little tricky because then dormancy starts in October. November, October, and so that means that these new growths have about two months before I'm going to start cutting back on the water. Um, so we'll see, they might come out a little skimpy because they won't get the, the same amount of water and nutrients as this growth that started out in the spring. But in general, more growth is better, it, gives, it makes a stronger plant. Oh man, Catlea Jose Marti. This is a seedling. Still, no blooms yet, but one, two, three, and then four. You can't see it down here. Four. new growth. Hopefully this is the year it's going to bloom. Really surprised at just how small the leaves are. Even with the, the blank sheath on it here, it's really small growths. And these new growths don't look like they're going to be that bigger, that much bigger either. It's going to outgrow its pot before it even blooms. It's crazy. Who I've ne never heard of having to divide a plant before it was even big enough to bloom. But I'm looking forward to this blooming big beautiful white fluffy fragrant flowers that's what we're going for uh, catacetums well this one Mormodia Jumbo World it looks like it's about to be done growing you can see last year's bulb that's this is about as big as the bulbs get so you can see that compared to this year's growth it's about there it's you know this is gonna swell up some and then in October all the leaves will fall off and it will be left with another uh, leafless bulb and then it will bloom around January. Uh, let's see, Signoti's Wine Delight never did really take off this year but that's okay. The, the, what it does have looks nice, looks good. 
that bulb has managed to get fatten up and then hopefully that new bulb will fatten up and then next year we can look for a little bit bigger growth but I actually might sell this plant off because uh, I can't I can't deal with another enormous catacetum in this grow tent there's just no space no space hmm Okay, that's about it. Oh, let me show you my Phalaenopsis in bloom. White Beauty Phalaenopsaurus. Mostly leaves, some pretty flowers. Let's go have a look. Here we go. I'm just really happy that I was able to get Phalaenopsaurus out of the grow tent without breaking the spike. Aren't they nice? Really happy with those. Alright, thanks for joining me, and I will see you next time right here on My Green Pets. If you haven't had a chance to watch Wednesday's video, I did a um, uh, video just kind of going through all the landscaping that I did when I was back home in Kentucky. Uh, so it's 30 minutes long. It's pretty, you know, but it, there is a table of contents in the description. You can check out different plants you might be interested in, especially if you live in Zone 6, USDA Zone 6. Uh, if you live in another country that doesn't have those corresponding zones, um, the temperatures, basically it's like 40 degrees max and negative 25 degrees minimum, something like that, Celsius. So if you live in a zone like that, you can grow the plants that are in that video. Okay, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time. Adios!